Hey guys and welcome back to another Brave 9 video. I'm doing this ahead of finishing up my Novice Arena tier list video, so I'm really sorry for those of you guys who've been waiting for that. As you all know though, the Octo Companions are going to come crashing into our meta in a few hours. The game's currently under maintenance, but for that reason, I feel like it's more important to get a jumpstart quest guide out first, since a lot of new players will be wondering which mercenaries are worth it in the current meta. Things are just not the same as they used to be, so it's not going to be as useful to look at older guides. But anyway, let's get right to the content. For the selections on every day, I still stick to what I always believe in, that is every mercenary is useful. Hence, if you're not playing the game for PvP content and just want to get your waifus, by all means, go for it. However, in this guide, I'm going to make the assumption that you are focusing on PvP content because that's what most people need advice on. Just wanted to make sure I clear that up before I begin. Also, keep in mind that things will change in time as more mercenaries get their plus 15 upgrades, but I'll be making recommendations based on what's available right now. Alright, so on the first day of Jumpstart Quest 1, we get to choose a 5-star warrior from this list. I'm not gonna read the names because they're there on the screen by the way, so yeah. Um, if you're looking for PvP mercs here, the only one who are going to be relevant at all currently are the two units that have plus 15 capabilities, Delvi and Christina. TLDR, among the two, I would recommend Christina. So let me explain. Delvi is honestly an amazing unit. She absolutely dominated the arena back when she first got her companion and has stayed in the meta for a very long time since. However, her skill set just isn't as unique anymore by any means. She has 100% defense in Fox form, which is really neat, but it's just not that special anymore with the likes of Angelica, Eden, Levia, Seto's special barrier. They all have 100% defense or something similar. In addition to that, their 100% defense is also permanent, unlike Dalby who rotates between fox form and human forms, so they're way more consistent than Dalby at the moment. Additional damage ignoring defense is also something that Dalby was used for, but nowadays we have tanky units like Falter that Dalby just can't kill, plus there are more and more mercenaries that can also deal defense ignoring damage, so Seto for example, which I'll get to in a moment, but that just further diminishes Dalby's value, and it's sad to say, but she's no longer good enough to stay in the current meta. Christina, on the other hand, remains unique, and if anything, has additional value now since Lucius is going to be everywhere. She's pretty much the only viable warrior who hits multiple times. Her 5 hits are going to be so helpful when trying to reduce Lucius's death guard count. She also has the minimum set of skills that allow her to stay relevant in the arena meta, such as 100% defense and debuff immunity when attacking. On top of that, she has some decent damage and will easily kill warriors and magicians that don't have 100% defense. She deals DOT damage, which can deal with the likes of Glacia unless she's buffed with DOT immunity as well. Overall, I still really like Dalvi, and without the Octo Companions, I think I might have picked her. But with Seto plus 9 looming large in the Jumpstart Quest 2, who has what Delvi is good for plus being able to do much more, I just can't recommend picking Delvi here, so I'll say without hesitation, go for Christina. Okay, moving on to the 4 star supporters. This is going to be monumental to Novice Arena, again especially more so for 3 star and 4 star mercenaries. They are unique in their own ways and will be useful in both Novice Arena and other game modes. However, if you're looking to excel in Novice Arena, then there are only two units that we're going to be focusing on here, that is Serendia and Ebony. For the longest time, I have recommended Serendia because she was the only unit here that had companions. Um, and she was just so overpowered that there's no deliberation in picking her, but man, things have changed. Ebony now has her companions, and she is here to fight it out. Till DR, they're both extremely relevant, so you can pick whichever you like, but personally, I picked Ebony. Now, Serendia is an amazing supporter. Her buffs last for 18 turns, which is a very long time. She grants a crap load of attack, has some nice crit rate, gives silence abilities to whoever she buffs, and also purifies them. For herself, she has good HP, is attack interference immune, and has reduced incoming damage. Ruining her with defense, she'll be a rather tanky unit for Novice Arena, 
And currently nobody really does what she does and coupled with her 3x3 range at plus 15, she's just beyond good. She does have some weaknesses now though, since the release of Ion and Belsir, who deal some form of stigma which when purified pretty much kills most mercenaries except for defenders or tanky units with high defense. But Serenity is still just really good and I would recommend that even if you do pick Ebony that you build Serenity up as well. Moving on to Ebony now, she is outright insane for the current Novice Arena meta. She grants her allies the ability to nullify, which is indispensable in Novice Arena, where it's really a taunting game. Nullify would remove the taunt without even having to kill the mercenary, thus allowing for a better setup for Maria to destroy the lane. Ebony also has crazy strong offensive buffs, granting a lot of attack and crit damage alongside some crit rate too. Besides that, she also grants two of the most important immunity buffs for Novice Arena in my opinion, that is attack interference immunity and stats weakening immunity. So she has a really outstanding kit and almost every high rank player uses her, myself included, so I would highly recommend picking her. At plus 12, she's really a game changer. So that's all for 4 star supporters. Next, we have 5 star defenders on day 3. This one is a little tricky, it's basically between Glacia and Kali. Um, Cecilia and Leclis are also pretty useful, Cecilia for certain modes like Cooperate, Patan, and maybe some Arena. Leclis for Arena defense, although she's kind of falling off now, but can still be useful in Underground Arena and some other parts of the game. But they can both function at lower skill levels, particularly Leclis, who can be used at plus zero, five star, unawakened, unleveled even. But yeah, so back to the main highlights that is Glacia and Kali. TLDR, I will recommend Kali. Comparing the both at plus 15, I would say that Glacia is still more useful. When paired with DOT immunity, she can be pretty hard to take down, especially since Christina is in the meta right now, which Glacia is a huge counter to. Again, keeping in mind that she has DOT immunity buff. Glacia also used to be able to counter Levia, however that won't be the case if she's the main target of a plus 12 Levia now, so she kind of falls off a little bit. But I imagine that Glacia will still be pretty useful in the arena, at least much more so than Kali. That being said though, Glacia specifically needs a plus 15 in order to be good. Without that, Kali does way way better, and for beginners starting out now, by the time you get around to building a plus 15 Glacia, she might no longer be relevant in the meta at all. On the other hand, you don't really need a Kali at plus 15 to do whatever Kali is good for, so I'll say get Kali because she's still pretty difficult for beginners to deal with. Typically, you need either a strong Ventana or Yuri or Angelica or Levia to kill her, which beginners are not going to get that easily. On top of that, Kali with her massive HP pool is indispensable in some modes of the game, like World Boss, so you'll have to get her at some point anyway, and I just think this is a good place to do it. Now, for day 4, we have 4 star magicians. Um, <laughs> There's actually not much to say here really, there's only one best option and that is Hell. All of the other options are pretty useful in modes like World Boss or Evil Castle, but none of them really beat Hell in terms of usefulness. Hell reflects for a lot of damage and heals when attacked. She can be used extensively throughout the campaign and in a lot of stages in Evil Castle as well. She just makes things so so much easier and just trust me on this one, pick Hell. Yep, that's all really, so let's move on to 5 star supporters. Uh, there are quite a few pretty good ones here, namely Michaela, Floria, and Veronia for the arena, Andolin and Walia for some other modes like campaign, world boss, and co op raids. But since this is a PvP guide, we'll be discussing Michaela, Floria, and Veronia. TLDR, I would recommend Veronia, but supporters in general are pretty interesting because Refi is kind of the dominating one. So let's have a further look. Michaela used to be good for her offensive buffs and DOT immunity, but nowadays her kit is considered limited and just not good enough for the current meta. She's pretty much an offensive supporter and doesn't offer much on defense, but Floria on the other hand is a defensive supporter and doesn't offer much on offense. Supporters in high tier arena now have to either bring about something really special like Goliath and his skeletons, or be good in both offensive and defensive buffs, which Veronia is capable of. 
Veronia grants a unit nearly 100% defense, it's actually 98% or so, um, and debuff immunity alongside crazy strong offensive buffs and she herself is pretty tanky too. The only downside to her is that she buffs only one tile, but really if she has any more than that she'll be too OP. <laughs> Typically people use her in conjunction with Ludmilla, who is decently hot right now due to the 100% defense, high HP Levias out there. So Veronia still has quite a place in the arena. Also, because of her unique kit, she's very versatile and can be paired with all sorts of units, thus allowing for many diverse playstyles. For beginners, she can be used with Angelica, who doesn't yet have 100% defense, to deal with the onslaught of Kaolis in early tiers. I've done this pairing in my new account and it's been working out pretty well. Nearing the end now, at day 6, we have the 4 star warrior selection. I think that this might be the most ambiguous selection of all the days. There are quite a few that I would consider really good in the Novice Arena meta right now, namely Corette, Leanne, Riddell, and Viola. The others can also be used quite effectively, but in general is just not as easy to use as those I've just mentioned. To do further filtering, I would say that the choice is between Corette and Riddell. TLDR though, I would choose Riddell. Corette and Riddell both have some pretty big attack range, Corette hitting skip in an X shape and Riddell hitting skip and the entire column. Damage wise though, Riddell does far more damage. Depending on what kind of formations you're playing against, I guess you could choose either, but generally from what I've seen, Riddell just does better in most settings. Corette's damage, while pretty high, is not anywhere near enough to take out the lights of Iris and Balasir, especially when they are on defensive buffs. I've seen her sometimes struggle to even kill Carlson, which Riddell does a much better job at. So while Corette isn't a bad unit by any means, she's honestly pretty damn good, and people in Challenger still use her as well, um, I would just recommend Riddell because Riddell is easier to use. Even if you're looking at campaign content, you can use Gunther in place of Corette, since he also hits skip in an X shape, plus he deals more damage as well. Last but not least, we have 4-star defenders. TLDR, pick Iris. <laughs> Even though there are some defenders that might contend with Iris, they're not on the list, so it's pretty straightforward. Iris is dominating the Novice Arena meta right now. She's really good, tanky, DOT immune, has high HP and the potential to reach 100% defense. And of course, her two-layer charm is just obnoxious. Not broken, but obnoxious nonetheless. She covers a huge range with skip and an X shape, so she's just way too good to skip out on this banner, so just pick her. Okay, so that's all the 4 stars and 5 stars for Jumpstart Quest 1. Now for the most important decision, which 6 devil should I pick? Ever since the update, I've always gone for Refidia. The reasoning is really simple, Refidia at plus 12 has the most OP range ever, she gives awesome offensive buffs and the special ability to reflect damage, purifies, grants reduce incoming damage, heals and being hit, and is extremely durable herself with debuff immunity and decent HP. She even has reduced incoming damage for herself, so wow, um, <laughs> sounds like an easy pick, right? Well, things are not like what they used to be. Before I get on to the spotlight, let me just address the other 6 double options. Alec is really nice to have, but just not essential as he's not really able to self-sustain. He has no form of defense, so he'll just die to any form of reflect. Nartes used to be king of the arena, but no longer since the release of Helga and now the reworked Octos. He falls super hard, and while he can still be used in many parts of the game and in Arena 2, um, I know some top Korean teams that still use Nartis, but he's just now only a shadow of what he used to be. Grand Hilder is a great unit and doesn't suffer any effects from Helga or the reworked Octos. She's tanky, reflects not only damage but debuffs as well, so it's understandable that many players go for her. However, the main thing about these units is that they're either just nice to have, in the case of Alec, or they can be used at lower skill levels, in the case of Nautis and Grand Hoder. Sure, they get a lot stronger at higher skill levels, Grand Hoder in particular, but to pick them at plus 9 would be a bit of a waste in my opinion. By now, you probably would have guessed where I'm going with this, Angelica. First of all, for new players, they have access to a plus 9 Kali who can go up to 60k HP, with set effects sometimes even 70k, 
and another tanky beast vulture is on a spike in usage increase, only coming after Levia in magician usage amongst top players. The only units who are capable of dealing with such high HP mercenaries consistently are Angelica and Levia. Levia has to be summoned, so she's not that easy to come by, and Angelica, well, you can literally just pick her up at plus 9 6 star max the week in here. But in order for her to be more potent, she does require plus 12 to reach 100% defense, similar to how Refi also needs plus 12 for her range. But is Angelica worth enough to be picked in place of Refidia is the question. Now both units are really strong in all sorts of modes in the game, but Refidia ultimately comes out on top in this regard due to her overpowering range and support buffs. No doubt, Refi plus 12 will give you a much easier time with formations and game content. Specifically, in top tier arena though, Refi has dropped real hard. Despite the vast majority of teams still using her, the top teams are mostly opting for a combination of Goliath and Veronia instead, skipping out on Refidia entirely. Note once again that I'm referring to the absolute top players in career, they're likely to have not much of an effect on the lower tiers at all, maybe even Diamond and Crystal, so I imagine that Refidia will still be extremely good for most teams. To be honest, I've deliberated on this choice for the longest time, often switching back and forth. Even recently, I picked Angelica for my new account, but I'm sort of thinking otherwise again, so I've been thinking a lot and now I will give my ultimate verdict. The one I would pick is still Refidia. Refidia at plus 12 is simply indispensable when it comes to other game content besides the arena. I use Refi in every single campaign stage, every world boss, every co-op raid, every evil castle stage if applicable, and boy does she make life 10 times easier. Angelica has her own merits and uniqueness that brings a lot to the table as well, but picking Refi and getting her to plus 12 will just make overall progression way faster and you're gonna get more diamonds, ancient coins, and other resources in the whole time that you have her, as compared to a plus 12 Angelica. With regards to Arena, I was trying out the Angelica plus Veronia combo in order to simulate having a plus 12 Angelica, and safe to say, plus 9 Angelica is pretty overkill when it comes to damage, with Veronia buffing her. I would think that a lower skill level Angelica can still kill Kali, Vulture, and Grenhoder. Maybe plus 6, I'm not too sure because I haven't really tested it out. But yeah, so I'd still get her using Ancient Coins and invest in her, but just as a later priority until I plus 12 my Refidia. Also, we all know that Seto is going to be a thing, and truthfully, Refidia is going to be able to counter him in some ways due to her reflect damage, so every time Seto attacks, he gets at least 11% of his HP taken away, which is a decent chunk, especially if you compare it to nothing, at least. So, that will pretty much do it for Jumpstart Quest 1. Um, obviously, don't just follow my choice blindly, make sure that you know full well what you're signing up for or missing out on when you're picking these mercenaries. I'll leave a link in the description to the Brown Dust, or Break 9, I guess, <laughs> the Break 9 book app, which lists all the skills and things like that. Lots of really useful information on every single mercenary, so do check out all the mercenaries there if you're interested. Um, I've changed my mind, I'm gonna do Jumpstart Quest 2 um, in addition to this, because it's not going to take too long, so here we go. We have two selections for Jumpstart Quest 2, first one being the 5 star magician selection. Now this is really awesome because we didn't get that in Jumpstart Quest 1, so I guess we're getting it now. Woohoo! <laughs> Amongst these units, the ones currently useful in meta are Catherine and Valter. Solely based off usage rates, Valter is definitely favored. The reason why Catherine suddenly saw a bit of usage is due to Lucius, since Catherine can also deal multi-hits. However, she is a magician, so you're gonna have to wait one round before she launches an attack. Plus, we still have Christina and Levia to kill off Lucius, so Catherine isn't that unique in that regard. Valter, with his growing HP pool, on the other hand, is way more unique and reliable in the arena. He is super hard to kill off, only Angelica and Levia is able to really, since he's immune to DOT skill types too. So if you lack the both of them and your opponent has a Valter, you might very well end up losing. So that's why I'm choosing Valter for this one. 
The second choice that we have is between Seto and Goliath. And I think the answer here is extremely obvious, all of you guys know it by now. While Belive is undoubtedly an awesome unit that a lot of high rank players use, Seto is just too good to not get. Seto is essentially the new warrior version of Rafidia in terms of usage rate. Pretty much everyone uses him and it's easy to see why. He's unaffected by buffs and debuffs, which at first glance seems pretty bad because he can't be buffed, but if you think about it, Helga has no effect on him. With regards to sustainability, Seto has a pretty insane skill that allows him to reduce only 11% of his HP every time he takes damage. So no matter how high or low the damage is, he simply takes 11% HP off. In addition to that, he has pretty high attack and deals defense ignoring damage every time he attacks or gets attacked. This kills off lots of meta units such as Angelica, Eden, Nartis, and Levia, which is why he is so damn good. There are some other interesting things about him and also some weaknesses, but I'm not going to cover it in this video since it's getting pretty long, so I'm going to just end it right here. At the end of the day, I'd still emphasize and I cannot stress enough that every single mercenary is unique and useful in their own way. No matter what their star rarity is, it can even be 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star. So don't feed them away unless you already have a maxed out copy. After all, this is specifically a PvP guide. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. I am so excited for the new update and I wish you all the best in game. Thanks for watching.